The Running Man, satirical action movie set in a dystopian future world obsessed with violence and TV. The Running Man, the story of Ben Richards played by Hollywood heavyweight Arnold Schwarzenegger, a police helicopter pilot who is framed for committing a massacre, who escapes jail and is on the run in this brutal police state world. The Running Man, a popular TV show that is part game show and part violent bloodbath, in which convicts who are chosen must make it through certain obstacles in order to avoid being brutally slaughtered by flamboyant executioners, otherwise known as the stalkers on live TV. The Running Man, kick-ass action movie released in 1987, at the time of Arnold Schwarzenegger's prime, when he was quickly becoming Hollywood's leading action hero, where his character Richards must enter the blood sport arena of the running man in order to survive and clear his name, while also sorting out the running man's evil, sleazy and corrupt host, Killian. In this movie that has become a fan favourite to all those who just can't get enough of badass action 80s movies. So get ready to fight to the death and try to get out alive while saying as many awesome one-liners as humanly possible. This is Running Man. And to celebrate this movie, we are going to look into 10 things that you probably didn't know about Running Man. Let's check it out. Only in a rerun. Go! Number 10, based on a story by Stephen King. Indeed, as hard as it may be to believe, The Running Man is actually based on a story by Stephen King, making this yet another Stephen King episode. What with its science fiction settings and more action oriented story, it's easy to overlook that The Running Man came from the mind of the paperback Frightener himself. The novel was published in 1982 and was released under the false name of Richard Buckman, which is a name that King went under whenever he wrote a book that was different to his usual more horror slash thriller slash drama related work. Apparently, when businessman George Linder brought the rights to the novel and approached producer Sir Rob Cohen about making it into a movie, neither Linda or Cohen didn't even know that it was based on a Stephen King novel. And when the movie was released, King insisted that his name not feature in the credits to once again keep up his Richard Buckman persona, which probably only helped even more with people not knowing that it was based on a King novel. So, with that said, let's check out some of the differences between the book and the movie. Number 9. Difference between book and movie There are tons of difference between the novel Running Man and its film. For example, in the book, Ben Richards is a weakened and malnourished man. In the movie, he's, well, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. In the book, Richards is more of an everyday man. Whereas in the movie, once again, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, to explain properly, in the movie, Richards is a police officer who is framed for a crime he didn't commit, whom has to try and clear his name. Whereas in the novel, Richards was suffering from malnutrition due to living in a poverty-stricken society, whom also had a wife and kid who were sick, to which Richards was always trying to find ways to get them medicine. So as a last-ditch effort, Richards enters the Running Man TV show in order to try and win some money for his wife and kid. It's actually quite sad and tragic. Whereas once again, in the movie, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger, complete in all his Schwarzeneggerness, whom doesn't have a wife and kids, but has a lot of one-liners instead. He is Sub-Zero, now Plane Zero. But also in the book, the Running Man game isn't confined to a TV studio, but the Stalker and Running Man chase can literally take place in any part of the world. In fact, there are tons of differences between the two. If you want to know more, then just go back and read the book. It's totally worth it just to experience a different interpretation of Running Man. Number 8. Christopher Reeve was going to play the lead. The 
As hard as it may be to believe, at one stage, Superman actor Christopher Reeve was in fact on board to play the part of Ben Richards in The Running Man. And damn, I would love to know what kind of movie it would have been had Reeve taken on the role. I would have imagined that it would have been a lot different and that Reeve would have played the part less cheesy and more serious. I can't help but feel like we would have gotten a more human element with Reeve. But Reeve left the project to work with Canon Films instead to make his multi-picture deal with them with Superman for The Quest for Peace and Street Smart. Another actor who was considered for the part was Patrick Swayze, but it was Arnie who ended up landing the role, where the movie became more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicle, with its fun explosions and cheesy kind of action style. And although the movie was widely embraced by its audience, not all were convinced of Schwarzenegger's casting, namely the story's creator Stephen King, as he said that Arnold is nothing like his original Ben Richards creation, as Arnie couldn't be further away from the average man persona. Ah! I love you! Don't forget to send me a copy. Number 7. Director Switches Originally, Italian director George Pan Cosmatos was originally on board to direct The Running Man. Cosmatos had two American movies under his belt when he took on The Running Man. First off was Unknown Origin, but it was his second American feature, Rambo First Blood Part 2, which got him the job directing Running Man. Cosmatos wanted to make the movie more intellectual and focus more on the totalitarianism aspect of the story. And it was his idea to make the love interest of the movie a freedom fighter, who inspires the Richards character to join the cause of defeating the corrupt government. But Cosmatus' ideas were too ambitious and were going over the movie's budget. So Cosmatus left the production, and British director Ferdinand Fairfax was brought on board to direct the movie. But he was then fired after a mere week after filming, because it was felt that he was making the movie too British. So then director Andrew Davis jumped in the director's seat, but he was then fired after eight days of filming. As within those eight days, the movie went $8 million over budget. So he was then fired too. Schwarzenegger apparently wasn't happy with this firing, as he claims he wasn't consulted when the director was axed from the project. The director who finally got the job and wasn't subsequently fired and filmed to the end was Paul Michael Glasser, aka Starsky from Starsky and Hutch. So wait, 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 let me get this right. Starsky from Starsky and Hutch directed an Arnold Schwarzenegger film that was based on a novel by Stephen King. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, my inner nerd just climaxed itself. Number 6. Rhythm of the Dance So there is a moment in the movie where we see the Running Man TV show introduction, and to be honest it kind of puts the action on pause, as the movie goes into music video mode. But hey, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, after all, it is the 80s. But all the dancing in that scene was choreographed by none other than Paula Abdul. Abdul had previously choreographed Janet Jackson's music video, Nasty, and would go on to choreograph the keyboard scene in Big, but just two years later she would make it big with her single, Opposites Attract, where she would become a pop cultural phenomenon in her own right. But regardless, it's nice to know that she was a part of the talent that helped bring The Running Man to life. Now, you would think that Paula Abdul would be the only musical artist attached to The Running Man, Oh no! Well, if you did, you're dead wrong! Number 5. Mac on the Run Oddly enough, British musician Mick Fleetwood was cast as a rebellion freedom fighter in The Running Man. Um, I guess Ringo Starr wasn't available? Mick Fleetwood was the co-founder of the highly popular British rock band Fleetwood Mac. And it just baffles me as to why he's starring in this movie. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with it. It just seems so random. Well, maybe the motivation may be found in the character's name, which was Mick. As apparently Mick Fleetwood is in fact playing a future version of himself, where he has joined a rebellion after a dictatorship society destroyed his songs and music. You're one of the cops who locked up all my friends, burned my songs, 
people like you took this country and turned it into a jail. Actually, that's kind of awesome and does make sense for him to be cast in the movie when you think about it. Number four, Game Show Pro. So the villainous role of Killian was played by Richard Dawson, who was in fact a real life game show host from the 70s all the way to the 90s. But Minty, you dickhead, we already know this, as he's an American icon. Yes, you're right, you easily offended oddballs who complain in the comments section about literally anything. But to those outside America, like me, we only know him from Running Man and had no idea that he was a real game show host. Dawson is most well known for being the host on the game show Family Feud, where he got the nickname The Kissing Bandit, for his reputation for kissing female contestants. Okay, weird. And supposedly, and I do mean supposedly, so take this with a pinch of salt, some people who worked with him said the way he is portrayed in The Running Man is closer to how he was in real life. But regardless, who knows, he still makes a great slimy villain. Number 3, Video Game So in 1989, a video game based on The Running Man came out, published by Grand Slam Entertainments Limited and released on a series of consoles, including the Commodore 64 and Atari ST. And it's basically as you would expect a game based on The Running Man to be like, a side-scroller consisting of four levels, where you have to defeat stalkers who are out to kill you. The gameplay could be tricky, but the graphics were spot on and capture the feel of the movie. Also, Arnie sure does kick a lot of dogs in the face in this game. Anyone else find that kinda weird? I'm honestly surprised it didn't outrage Peter. Number 2. Arnold Couldn't Beat Arnold It was decided to push the movie's release date back, otherwise Arnie would be up against an unstoppable box office giant. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep, another movie starring the muscle-bound heavyweight. As also in 1987, Arnold Schwarzenegger went into the jungle to fight Predator. In fact, the movies were nearly released round about the same time, which would have meant the two movies would have been competing against each other, which probably would have meant that one of the movies wouldn't have fared too well. So to avoid this awkward competition, Predator was released on June the 12th, 1987, and The Running Man was released on November the 13th, proving that 1987 was the year of Arnie. However, had the two movies been released round about the same time as planned, Predator probably would have been the victor, as it made 98 million, whereas Running Man made 38 million. Number 1. Schwarzenegger's Woes When the movie came out, it didn't fare up too well with critics. Naturally, I mean, come on, this isn't exactly a film critics are going to like, but the audience loved it, and it has gone on to become a cult classic. However, not everyone is on board, namely its main star, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who felt that the movie's third director, Andrew Davies, should have stayed on board, and felt that his firing hurt the movie. Arnie was critical of Paul Michael Grasser, thinking he was totally wrong for the job, coming from a background in TV, and felt like he made the movie look and feel like a TV show. But I think that's a little harsh. After all, in my opinion, the movie looks great. Ooh, I guess the irony is that Arnie didn't like the movie's director, whereas the creator of the story, Stephen King, didn't like Arnie's interpretation of his character. I guess no one likes anyone today. I say just stop the bickering and enjoy Running Man. Enjoy its senseless cheese and violence and its satire on society. Anyway, I'm Minty, and look! Sub-Zero! Now, Plain Zero! Sorry, that's my favourite line from the film. I just had to get it off my chest. See ya.